Have you ever wondered which weapons are the best for Demo Man? Yes! What weapon combinations work the best for yes! him? Yes! I don't really play as a Demo Man myself, but I know someone who does a lot. Thanks to Mr. Sniper for helping me with the creation of this video. In this guide, I will present you with three loadouts with this class according to Mr. Sniper's recommendations. Let's get started! Number 1. Classic Demo Man one of the few classes for which every sort can be easily fit with stock weapons without the dilemma of whether they'll be powerful enough. If you're looking for alternatives in this loadout, it would be the first slot, as there's a wide range of choices here. Since we're already talking about it, take a look at what you have to choose from. Lock and load. This weapon will come handy against sentries. See how quickly you can destroy them using this grenade launcher. To destroy a construction, two grenades are enough, unless the engineer repairs them in the meantime or uses the wrangler. It deals a whopping 20% more damage to constructions and these grenades also fly faster, giving the poor engineer less time to react. Contrary how the weapon looks, it has three grenades in the clip, not two. The weapon's appearance is like that because before the 2014 update, the lock and load had two grenades in the clip. Just an interesting fact. Grenades from this weapon explode upon contact with the target, just like the default grenade launcher. However, its grenades don't roll on the ground and disappear upon contact with surfaces. I wouldn't use the lock and load for player-focused attack because it has minus 25% blast radius. Besides, there are better weapons for that purpose. For example, Stock Grenade Launcher. It has the biggest clip and the best explosion damage. And the Iron Bomber is also a good choice. This grenade launcher has the feature that its grenades explode faster by a whopping 30% and they hardly roll on the ground at all, giving you greater control over them. Speaking of control, it must be admitted that aiming with the grenade launcher is difficult because the grenades travel in an arc and drop fairly quickly. Therefore, it's better to pull out the grenade launcher only when attacking enemies up close. However, Keep in mind that if you stand too close to the target, you'll get damage from the explosion yourself. For those who are skilled, grenade launcher aiming, regardless of the type, can be done at any distance, even in the air. These are called air pipes and their results are very satisfying. When it comes to melee, definitely go with the stock option, which is either the bottle or, if someone has it, the frying pan. The frying pan for the demo man, it's so iconic that some even become demo pan players and pan everyone around. Now, let's move on a slot that defines this loadout, the stock sticky bump launcher. It works exceptionally well for destroying enemy nests, as not only are the sticky bombs from this weapon very effective against sentries, but also against large groups of enemies. You can place stickies, that's what we call these bombs, on the ground beneath structures and then destroy them with a single click. For instance, it takes just three stickies to destroy a sentry, three for a dispenser, and remember, you have up to eight bombs. Holding down the fire key longer will make the bomb travel further. Fun fact, the grenades and bombs shoot slightly on the right of the crosshair, requiring players to aim to the left. This is particularly important when dueling up close with faster classes like Scout. When attacking enemies, you can lay stickies at their feet, and it's best to trap them on the ground so they have nowhere to escape, or place stickies when they'll soon flee. Stickies are very effective when crit boosted. This weapon is quite powerful, and some like to complain that the demo man has two primary weapons instead of one. Powerful stickies and powerful pipes. Pipes are grenades from grenade launcher, that's how we call it. Stickies are also great for setting traps. You can create them at spawn, in various choke points or other interesting spots. If you have a taunt that allows you to look around corners, it will be easier to spot victims close to your trap. Moreover, it's worth knowing that you can jump on sticky bombs just like the soldier can rocket jump. By the way, you can do the same on grenade launchers. Best grenade jumps you can perform on Iron Bomber because its grenades don't roll. There's another interesting weapon for second slot, the Scottish Resistance. This weapon allows you to lay and detonate stickies where you aim. This weapon is a topic for a separate video, but I'll just mention here that this weapon is quite useful for traps. How to play with this loadout? 
It works the best on maps with large enemy clusters, such as attack defense or payload maps. You can attack enemies grouped around the cart, destroy engineer nests, and generally rack up multiple kills at once. Use the grenade launcher for close-up combat or against individual enemies, and the melee weapon comes in handy when fighting up close or when you're out of ammo and the enemy is close enough to finish off. It's a highly versatile loadout that works in practically any situations, especially when paired with a medic. Number 2. Demonite. A demo man who fights only with melee. In this case, we don't use the grenade launcher or sticky bombs. If you want, you can use some kind of grenade launcher, but that's more of a hybrid knight rather than a true demo knight. Here, I'll describe the demo knight, but I'll also touch on the hybrid approach. Iconic element of this loadout. A melee weapon. The most commonly chosen weapon is the Islander. Why this weapon? Because every decapitated head gives us a buff in the form of health and speed. However, if you're a beginner demonite, the downside of this weapon, in the form of no random critical hits and a potential minus 25 max health penalty for the user, can be problematic. Generally, you get buffs, but you have to be able to earn them by getting kills. Therefore, a safer option might be the Scotsman's Calcutta, which offers a whopping 20% damage increase at the cost of movement speed. Regarding melee weapons in general, I recommend testing out the rest and choosing what suits you best. Second slot. Shields. Each one has a different use. If you feel that you often die, choose the Charging Targe, as it provides the best resistances. Generally, each shield adds some resistances, but this one offers the most. Every shield also has a charge meter. You can activate the charge by pressing the right mouse button when the meter is full. When you hit an enemy during the charge, you'll deal a critical or mini crit depending on the distance. The shield's impact during the charge also deals damage, even more so with the splendid screen, but at the cost of resistances. The most interesting shield, however, is the Tide Turner. This shield allows for trimping. You see that demo man? Yes, those are trimping moves, and the tight turner allows you to have full control over the direction you turn while charging. Trimping is a complex mechanic and it's a topic for a separate video. The tight turner can be useful even in a simple maneuvers that are very handy for reaching enemies during a charge. It's worth doing so because we are guaranteed a critical hit afterward. Now the first slot. Boots. There isn't much choice here, as there's only one option, the Botlega or the Alibaba's Wii Booties. They're the same, just different skins. These boots provide us with the buffs you can see on the screen. They also grant a bit of turning control during charging, though with the Tide Turner we have full control. Additionally, they offer extra health, charge meter buildup and faster walking speed, but only when paired with a shield. Now let's discuss the Hybrid Knight as in this slot you can swap for a grenade launcher. Essentially, instead of the mentioned boot buffs, you receive damage from the grenade launcher. It's a trade-off. Moreover, any other grenade launcher is good, except for lock and load. Also, remember pipe jumps. They come in handy for positioning to get decapitation hits. How to use this loadout? Be sneaky with your approach to enemies. Use your charge for both offense and escape. Remember that using the charge removes all negative effects, so if you're on fire, you can put it out with a charge. This loadout works well on most maps except those with narrow choke points like Dust Bowl. The Demo Knight can both flank and be more aggressive and direct in attacks due to their substantial resistances. Make use of your mobility to sneak up behind enemies. You don't need to fear crowds like a scouts, but always calculate the risk, especially if you are not yet proficient in getting decapitated hits. Number 3. Sticky Jumper. And now, the last loadout. It might seem like a useless set, but it's actually quite effective and has many practical applications. The iconic weapon here is a sticky jumper. This sticky bomb launcher doesn't deal damage. It's a training weapon. You use it to sneak up behind enemies unnoticed and attack from behind. You can also play around with enemies and divert the attention from the main target. As a jumper, you can hop from health pack to health pack, engaging in a cat and mouse game with enemies. However, remember that even though the sticky jumper has 8 bombs in the clip, you can only have 2 stickies active on the ground at once. 
Any additional bombs you place will cause the earlier ones to explode. Your main source of damage is the grenade launcher and your primary targets are snipers, medics and other classes that maintain distance. If you prefer a more aggressive playstyle, you can also execute suicidal attacks against larger groups of enemies. These attacks are difficult to predict and the grenade launcher's damage can be significant. Keep in mind though that the grenade launcher works differently from say a soldier rocket launcher and regardless of the distance it deals the same amount of damage to direct targets which is 100. When it comes to explosion damage it's also quite similar. In addition, if you're a team-oriented player, as a jumping demo man, you should primarily focus on removing teleporters. This will delay the enemy's arrival on the battlefield, which can be incredibly helpful. For this purpose, use the lock and load, as you can also tag sentries during jumps or aim at them from the so-called blind spot where the sentry's range doesn't reach. Regarding melee weapons, as a supportive demo man, it's a good idea to carry the Ulapol Kaba, as it can be useful for quickly capturing points or pushing the cut. Besides that, choose a melee weapon that suits you, as your main source of damage will still be a grenade launcher. How to play? This loadout works best on open maps where you can leverage the most potential from sticky jumper jumps. Additionally, it's highly useful on control points or attack defense maps, as you can cleverly and discreetly capture points. Flank, surprise enemies from the air, destroy constructions from safe distances, retreat from enemies when things get dangerous, and most importantly, have fun. These are our suggestions. Thanks again to Mr. Sniper for his assistance in creating this video. Dear viewers, I'd love to hear about your favorite loadouts in the comments. Bye!